Good morning, all. Welcome to day two of the Bermuda Tech Summit 2021. My name is Marcus Wade. I work within the Premier's Office of FinTech in the Government of Bermuda, and it is my honor to open the summit today by having a conversation with Ms. Sandra Rowe, the CEO of the Global Blockchain Business Council. Welcome, Sandra. I'm grateful to have this time to have a conversation with you. How are you doing today? Hi, Marcus, and thank you so much to you and Premier Burt and the entire Bermuda team for uh, inviting me to spend some time with you this morning. It's a blessing. I feel like these um, these conversations are are what it's really about having this tech summit. So I'll get started off the bat. What makes Bermuda the ideal location for blockchain technology for us to innovate in this type of technology? And how can blockchain technology help Bermuda? If you don't mind just diving into that. Oh, absolutely. First of all, I'm sure this has come up numerous times in your conversations around blockchain. But blockchain technology is a collaboration technology. It is actually the antithesis of the way a lot of software projects of old days um, came about, which is you came up with an idea, you built it yourself, and then you sort of put it out to the world and said, you know, please buy it. This is a very different model. This model requires collaboration of multi-stakeholders, both public sector and private sector. It actually enables and, and it actually encourages lots of different people and groups that they don't normally talk to each other in some instances to actually collaborate, even competitors within industries to collaborate with each other at a certain level. Um, so as a collaborative technology, I would say Bermuda is primed to be at the center of it. Why? Because Bermuda has a long history. Um, Marcus, you know better than I, being a Bermuda. <laughs> Um, of, of collaborating with many nations, with many industries, with many um, different types of stakeholders. You see, that's it's beautiful to hear you say that because after uh, the past two years, I've been studying our reinsurance and our insurance industry. And that's really been one of the basis of our success is that there's a relationship that has developed in our community between the industry the legislators and the regulators. And I speak to this all the time because that, that uh, new version of the Bermuda Triangle, if you don't mind me saying so, is an is a, is a example of collaboration that we hope to rep, uh, replicate within the new frameworks for digital assets and, and other innovations that are coming that blockchain has an impact on. Yeah, I just wanna move on to the next area because I feel like the history that we have is tied to risk management. And yeah. I think that there's a lot of blessings that can come from managing risk in these new areas. And I'd like to know, how do you see the innovation that is fostered by blockchain technology benefiting the citizens in Bermuda and also benefiting you know, the global community as a whole? Yeah, well, I'm so glad you brought up the concept of risk management because I totally agree with you. Bermuda has a long history, not just because it's insurance and reinsurance, but the innovation side, right? And, and risk management being a very critical part to that. And that also applies to blockchain technology. Um, people always kind of give a strange look when I call blockchain technology a risk mitigation tool. And people <laughs> what I mean by that. And what I mean by that is because this technology really helps to shine light on things that maybe do not have a lot of um, light and transparency, um, verifies credentialing or um, you know, pieces of information that um, needs to be confirmed um, by multiple parties and not necessarily trusted by one party to have given that verification. Uh, there's just a host of things that blockchain does that fits very well with it helping to reduce fraud, corruption, providing more information, um, being basically a trust builder. And a lot of people say that also about blockchain, it's a trust building mechanism. And when I think about it in the context of Bermuda per se, I really think with Bermuda's history, the fact that it's a country with so much talent, but it's small enough that it's not super uber bureaucratic. You have a premier and, and yourself, Marcus, and, and a government that has all the will and also the execution to, um, do right sometimes there are groups that want to do high desire but low actual like getting stuff done ability and then the vice versa but actually in bermuda you have both and that's the magic 
combination of ingredients we need in order for this to work. So I, I, I see the, the world is an oyster. It's open for Bermuda to really uh, lead in certain categories. I agree. And I feel like um, government's role in developing policy going forward tied to these innovations is that's key. And I'm, I'm glad to have had the opportunity to work with the GBBC on initiatives like the, uh, the, the global standards mapping initiative that we have. And yeah. to move on to the next area, I think this is a perfect segue. There's a working group within the GSMI that is called the Digital Identity Working Group. Oh. And I love this topic, even though it is complicated and the source of many headaches, the more I think about it, because it's multifaceted. Yeah. And I'd like to ask you, if you wouldn't mind just giving us some detail on what's needed to drive innovation in the space as pertains to digital identity, especially as in regards to Bermuda. Absolutely. And first of all, I want to thank you and Bermuda for participating in the Global Standards Mapping Initiative. 2.0 is launching in early November. Uh, last year, we mapped 185 jurisdictions, uh, accounted for nearly 400 industry consortia, and then also mapped 34 technical standards. We're increasing that um, you know, uh, expansion and updating of that information. But then, as you say, we are uh, we launched a digital identity working group. Why? Because the feedback from last year said we need to map out what is going on with respect to digital identity, both in the blockchain and non-blockchain side. Because remember, there are lots of digital identity solutions that have nothing to do with blockchain that are being developed, as well as blockchain-based solutions. And the question is, how do we make all of this work? How could this actually work for the average person? And I think what Bermuda is doing with respect to number one, participating in this mapping exercise, appreciate that. We have over a hundred institutions um, actually globally participating in this uh, crowd uh, sourcing of information. So that's great. But then further to that, Bermuda as a perfect test bed for creating and then implementing the step-by-step -step evolution that we need for an optimal digital identity uh, framework. See, I, I love that you put it like that because it's, it's really about more than just, you know, having, as you said, a, a, a piece of information online that, you know, is your driver's license. It's about bringing verifiable uh, proof to any piece of digital information with that in mind, I'd like to, to speak to what, what we envision being Bermuda's vision, which is to, um, it's to enable for the issuance of like verifiable credentials for all different types of government issued documents. Now, this is an effort to support the industry itself in building on top of the underlying uh, 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 issued and credentials. So if this vision can be, can be advanced and implemented, how do you see this unlocking potential within the global community and, and within Bermuda itself when it comes to blockchain development and innovation? Absolutely. Um, digital identity, I think most people agree, is critical. I think the um, divergence is how do we get there, right? And exactly. you know, Bermuda can, one, be a unifying force in terms of bringing lots of different stakeholders together, again, the collaboration part, um, to actually come up with the solution that works for Bermuda. And my view would be also, it's a multi-step. It's not like we do it in one big bang and somehow it's done. It's gonna require steps, different steps at different levels. And then the government issued ID is a portion of a much larger digital identity um, evolution, which includes uh, the digital identity when you are a baby. We were just talking about this. It's different than when you are a teenager. It's different than when you start going into work life. Um, we all, you know, all the adults in the room know that. Um, and and at our persona changes, our digital persona will change as well as we accumulate credentials, academic records, um, various other accolades, our hobbies, you know, we get married or various other things happen in life. Um, people have children. These things start changing our digital identity. So it's no longer about you or I. Uh, our passport is not our identity. That is not exactly. it. I mean, it is a piece of our identity, but it is certainly not the whole picture. And I think that's where we're going. And the more we empower individuals, it will help local Bermudans, but it will also help 
any average person about who they are in a digital world and having more control over that. And you mentioned this before too, Marcus, how important privacy is to Bermuda and to the government and to all of us actually. Um, yeah. I don't talk about privacy enough and safeguarding privacy in our laws and in the way we design any future product or solution. I see it. And that's that's the importance again of collaboration because the industry, any industry can come up with innovation. And yet if it provides risks that is unacceptable to society as a whole, then we need to, to have things in play to, yeah. to bring it within what is acceptable. And I feel like government's role in providing credentials is key for many reasons. Um, the, the, the two that come to mind off the bat are when you look at what problems we're actually trying to solve, when it comes to the issuance or, or even just a, a digital identity landscape across the board, we have to understand how to make information verifiable, first of all. Like, how do we prove that it's authentic, that it's, that it's true, that, that it's not a fraudulent piece of information? And then second, we have to look at how that piece of information can be proven to be original. Now, blockchain helps to provide an answer to, to many of these, like, to those two questions particularly because of you know, it helps to deal with the double spend problem or the double spend conundrum. And that's a part of why it was developed. But in each different iteration of digital ID credentialing, I think that there's opportunities for us to, to explore what's possible. And yeah, I'd love to hear, hear, your, hear your thoughts on, you know, the different use cases that you see being most applicable. Yeah, no, I mean, there are lots of different use cases around um, helping those who have no identity at all, and it's difficult for them to prove. That's not going to be the issue in Bermuda, per se, because yeah. most citizens there have an ability to prove who they are. I think what is an extension beyond that is how can I securely hold my health records my financial records, my academic credentials in a way that is super easy and I have control over, but, and I get to share it with whom I would like in a secure fashion, um, but we're not there yet when it comes yeah. to making all of those things. And oftentimes there are laws, like you said, Marcus, that need to be either amended or, or, or created to actually facilitate that because um, every country's got different rules around information sharing, information holding. And these are, again, uh, it gets very complicated very quickly. But my view would be, if we will really start to unpack this. First, we get the government issued identity framework uh, rightly set up. And then we add on layers of additional components that can be um, included that are really in the hands of the, of the individual. But ultimately in a framework that is secured by multi-parties. As and a utility. That's, I'm so sorry. As a utility, it should be a shared common good. I couldn't agree more. I feel like the way that we've approached this has been because of a, a situation of need. So we've already taken preliminary steps towards the issuance of, of and the, the, the process of verifying credentials and, and, and information. An example is the, the vaccine certificates that we implemented during the COVID pandemic. Hmm. That was a step that came about because it was necessary. And yet it highlighted the, po the possibility of actually verifying information for citizens. And you know the, the, the use of that type of technology, I think that as we build out this framework, and we are early days, but as we build out this framework, there's unlimited potential to be had. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for that, that insight you provided though, that's. And we will do our part as the GBBC to help support you and, and Bermuda, uh, Marcus, but also I invite anyone who's listening to who, who does do a lot of deep work in digital identity, blockchain or not, to, to get involved and raise your voice because now is the time when there are countries and groups of um, people around the world who are building out solutions. And we need to make sure that we are sharing notes, we are collaborating. Um, I'm certainly not of the mindset that like one technology will be used, standard will be used for everything. It won't, it, it's gonna be a, a bunch of different things, but how do we ensure that there is some level of standardization, some level of commonality and that they can interoperability? And how do we make sure that it's fair, um, that it's um, designed with privacy in mind 
and useful to the individual. Because if it's not useful to the individual or the institution that's being represented, then what is the point? Value, function, and trust. Three things that we can't do business without. So I see that we're, we're, we're getting right up to the end of our time today. I'm, I have to say that I'm so grateful for the opportunity to speak with you, Sandra. This has been, has been an honor. Thank you, Marcus, Premier Burt, and the entire Bermuda team. You guys are awesome. All right. You take care.